So welcome back to the XG project. What can we look at today? Uh, how about suspension? I don't think I've talked about that yet. So I put a little bit of work into the suspension end of things here. Let's pop on down, take a look at the front end. Pretty simple. We got the uh, Rubicon Express six inch coils. Those have worked out really well for me with the, uh, with the bumper on there. It works out just about right for clearing everything. Uh, in conjunction with that, you can see the drop bracket and the uh, Rubicon Express adjustable track bar in there, which you definitely need if you're going higher than three or four inches to get that axle recentered, and it's a little bit beefier. For, uh, for the front control arm linkages, I've gone with the Rock Crawler long arm kit. I put that in kind of halfway through. I had been running just the factory control arms on the six inches or so of lift in this thing. Uh, the rock crawler, as you can see that front joint at the top of the differential there, is, uh, is a proprietary joint of theirs. It's a form of ball joint, greasable. And I've had to rebuild that thing once uh, in my miles of owning this thing. Works not too bad. And uh, the, the, the control arms themselves are super beefy. Uh, you might be able to see that far one through on the other side there. They're like inch and a half, super heavy wall tubing, if not solid. I can't remember what exactly it is. This is a, uh, I guess, a four-link suspension, including the track bar there. They delete the uh, passenger side uh, upper control arm and just use that single one on top of the differential there. And that gives you a lot better articulation, which I got plenty of in this thing. So frame end at this side is uh, right there and uh, that's the control arm as you can see super heavy duty uh, I don't think I can see the upper control arm heim joint where it meets the frame there but take my word for it so let's look at the back end now all right rear suspension so uh, as you can see leaf springs back here this has gone through a number of different iterations in the uh, in the back end here. I started off with a two inch Old Man Emu spring pack. Great ride, as Old Man Emu is known for. And in the back there, I built myself these uh, uh, shackles there. A little bit of tube, I'll weld it up, um, and they work great. A little extra travel out of them and uh, they're about four inches longer than stock so we got about two inches extra height there so two inches in the shackles and two inches in the springs and then at the frame end mount I built these things and they just bolted in uh, right in place right in place here's uh, where they bolted into the factory factory mount there for the leaf springs and then I built this little yoke deal that uh, pivots on a bolt here. I'll weld it up. And uh, the theory was that I would, uh, I, I would gain a little bit more articulation out of things if I could allow the leaf spring to pivot at the frame end. In reality, once I got everything installed, I discovered when I got things all twisted up, those things hardly pivoted at all, which sort of uh, demonstrated that you don't need a, a heck of a lot more at the, at the front end to get maximum articulation out of the springs. So uh, two inches on that, two inches on the old old man emus, and two inches on the shackles gave me about six inches of lift. Since then, the old man emus sort of wore themselves out, got good use out of them, and I replaced them with, I uh, can't remember this three or four inch BDS leaf pack in here. So uh, I got my lift back that way, and then and with the shackle mount on the, um, on the tube there I got a little bit extra and then in conjunction with that I don't know if you can see but I put in some uh, some air shocks there um, you just fill them up to however much air you want in them and they give you a little extra little extra lift out of there um, you won't be able to see it but up at the top end I did the uh, bar pin eliminator and uh, that made things a little bit stronger up there to handle a little extra loading from, uh, from the shock mount now carrying some of the load of the suspension. So uh, between that and the springs and the shackles there, I'm still sitting at about six, seven inches of lift depending on how much air I throw in there. 
Uh, what else I got? Oh, a uh, bump stop, obviously, right there. I extended those a few inches to keep me clear. And, uh, oh, dang. Look what I did there. I put my brake line in, now that I just did my brakes, right underneath the bump stop. Now uh, I should be able to bend that out of the way, I hope. Darn it, just after I bled the brakes and everything. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, a bunch of air lines running to and fro, air lockers, uh, air shocks, uh, air supply f to the front and to the back and to the, uh, to the rock rails here, which store air. Uh, what else have I got under here? Not a whole lot else, I don't think. So that's the, that's the rear suspension. Works great. Got things set up, so I got just a tiny bit of rubbing, as you can see on the, on the inner fender there. Um, and I get great articulation out of the out of the back end and out of the front. It's very well balanced. If you look at a lot of uh, a lot of vehicles, you see them articulate like crazy at one end, but not the other. This thing is very well balanced uh, articulation-wise, which keeps it really stable. It's reasonably stable off camber, no problems there, and uh, and it climbs like like you wouldn't believe. This thing is just amazing climbing up stuff. So yeah, that's the suspension. I will check in with you later when I find something else to show you.